Hello everyone, this video will cover the Old Benoni Defense. Now the Old Benoni Defense is one of my favorite defenses against d4 because number one, most queen pawn opening players are just not prepared for this and they don't have it in their uh, opening lines that they have memorized and so it really throws them off and if, if you study this well and, and know every uh, line deeply then it could really really put you in a good position and a good uh, place to win the game. So uh, the old Benoni um, is similar to other Benoni uh, moves, which is like the modern Benoni um, and things like that. But uh, immediately after d4, you go ahead and play c5. And this is now the sign that you're playing the old Benoni. Um, and here white is presented with three main options. Either protect the pawn uh, in some way, either push the pawn forward, um, or capture the pawn. This first video, this first part, I'm going to be... Uh, talking about if white decides to capture the pawn here and um, this video is actually very interesting because it actually includes a trap that you can do called the old Benoni trap and uh, we'll go over that in this video. Like I said, white captures. Uh, now let's go over uh, two options that you have. Uh, if you're more of a player that wants to play it very safe and wants to get the material back and take advantage of these two center pawns as opposed to this uh, well, only center pawn um, very quickly and very early on and just want to get the material back and, and start fresh and start um, pushing the pawns in the center, I would suggest playing uh, queen to a5, check. And this forces white to, to block the check. Uh, and white has a couple of ways, um, but regardless, you then go ahead and capture this pawn here. And like I said, it's like a, it's like a brand new game. Uh, everything is cleared off the board and you have two center pawns uh, to white's one center pawn here, and uh, you have uh, ideas of developing uh, many of your pieces as well as your bishops coming into the game very well on these diagonals. Um, there is one downside to this, uh, which is why I prefer the other um, response to the capture, to the capture, uh, which I'll show you uh, next. So the one downside is that you now have a queen in the center of the board, and it's not necessarily bad, uh, especially late game, it's very important to have a queen controlling and roaming these these uh, center parts, but in the first couple of moves, especially when both players haven't haven't developed yet, it is considered uh, a little bit worse to have a, a queen in the center, because uh, a queen in the center, although it's very powerful, it makes it also a very big target. And so you might see white play a move like this, um, and this would be fairly annoying. Um, you know, the queen is not in any trouble, the queen can simply move back, but you now, you're, you're uh, taking a move away from, from yourself. So having a queen in the center can work for you, but it could similarly work against you, which is why I would prefer instead, uh, after white captures, I would prefer to play uh, what most master, uh, grandmasters and uh, higher rated players uh, decide to play, which is e6. Now, um, when the queen was here, it was a target. It wasn't very nice uh, to have a queen in the center in the start. Uh, but if your bishop is here, which is what you're threatening now, um, it, it could be a, a lot better for you. Now, I'm going to explain that um, the best move for white here is to say, okay, you know what? That's it. You know, I, I traded a, uh, a center pawn for an outside pawn. I admit it was a mistake. Let's move on and play a move like this. Uh, and ignore this, this this threat here. But some people just really want to, to get this pawn back. And so there's two ways that I have encountered, at least, um, of, of people trying uh, to get the, the, the piece back. The first one is bishop right here uh, on, on e3. And I think that this is, uh, both ways, by the way, are terrible. Uh, but I think that this one is especially bad because the bishop, it's, it's a terrible placement for the bishop. Um, you move your knight here as your next move, and this pawn is now doubled attacked, and there's no way for white to protect this pawn. If white, if white tries something like this, well, this knight covers this square. So it's, it's going to be a, a pretty bad uh, situation for white. And additionally, uh, after you capture this pawn, this bishop here, it's, it's not a great bishop in the sense that it's blocking this pawn from moving forward, which is blocking this bishop from moving forward. Uh, diagonally, which is blocking this king from, from um, castling, which means that white is going to have to make a decision. 
either spend another move on moving this bishop somewhere back uh, or forward, um, or castle queenside, or do something like maybe you know put put your your bishop on this square. But either way, it's going to hurt white more than it, it benefits the white. And uh, even if white decides to to for example um, take the bishop away like this, uh, it's still wasted a move. And now uh, black is is I mean winning uh, very very well uh, in this game and uh, white is, 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 is not great for white uh, yeah now uh, I also want to explain that this pawn here uh, not only does it let this bishop come into play but it also allows this pawn here once this pawn wants to move forward to be a nice stronger pawn with a, a chain of pawns uh, supporting it which can benefit you uh, in the long run um, when you when you want to use those pawns now let me go over to the second way that you might see white protect this pawn, which is this move. And at first glance, seems reasonable, uh, seems pretty good. Uh, if you try to maybe play a move like this to threaten this pawn, you can, you might see this. Uh, but that's exactly what you hope. Uh, you're going to play this move. And this is where the trap comes into play. Um, so white has three options. Capture the pawn, proceed forward, or protect the pawn. Now, the third option, protecting the pawn, Wow, you'd be so happy if they decide to protect the pawn because it doesn't matter how they they decide to protect the pawn, you're winning. If they decide to protect the pawn with this, for example, uh, then you go ahead and capture, and after they capture back, you move your queen here, and you're threatening to capture the bishop, and the only move that white has is moving this knight here, and then after capture, moving this bishop here, uh, and obviously now you're protected, um, so you still win a minor piece. You, you win the knight. So terrible blunder. Um, and, and this is uh, part of the trap. Uh, the Benoni trap, it's not a, a one-move trap because it's, it's kind of this whole area. Um, so you can see that there's going to be many different uh, little traps and little um, things that you might encounter. Uh, next, if white protects with this, similar idea. Uh, first of all, you can move this here. Uh, and, and you're threatening to grab this. So let's do that first. You can move this here. You're threatening to grab this rook here. Uh, and now you can't see this. However, then you play this move. And if white grabs with this, you grab this rook. If white grabs with this, you grab this rook. So you're going to get another pawn. Probably not this pawn because you want this uh, pawn blocking this. So you're going to grab this pawn. Um, it's going to be very happy for you. Uh, and a really nice game. Uh, and then there's even ideas of some nasty discoveries. Like moving this pawn forward um, and discovering on this rook. So, very, very good uh, position for you to be in. Uh, because of this, usually white does not protect this and instead either proceeds forward or attacks. If white goes forward, uh, you can grab this pawn here. And I guess for, for the time being, ignore this pawn here. Eventually, uh, you're going to grab this pawn as well, um, either by playing a, a move like, uh, like moving the queen here, for example, and, and gobbling up this material, um, or even proceeding or pushing this pawn forward and then moving the queen here in check. Uh, and then grabbing this material here. Um, either way, very, very uh, good position, and you have two center pawns as opposed to one. And now let's go ahead and take a look at if white decides to capture. If white captures, I would suggest, there's many different ideas. You can grab with the queen, you can grab with the bishop, you can grab with the queen in check, and then grab with the queen, uh, or with the bishop. Uh, there's many different ideas. This is what I recommend. I recommend grabbing with the, with the bishop. Because if white is not careful, this could lead to a very, very, very awful, uh, awful trap uh, that wins you the rook. Um, and this is kind of the second part of the trap uh, in this in this uh, game. So if white decides to play anything else uh, like this, seems a pretty reasonable move. Uh, trying to get some some room in the center yourself, I guess. Um, then you go ahead and play this wonderful move, and you're not even worried about this pawn. You're threatening to grab this. You're threatening mate. Uh, and, and black cannot stop both, so black plays this, you grab this, and uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, position, and uh, you can just continue grabbing up material here, and I mean, this, is, this game is already over, in theory, so it's a wonderful trap, I really enjoy using it and playing it, and I'll see you guys next time.